From 2019 to late 2020, the percentage of Americans who reported suffering from anxiety and depression quadrupled, with the largest increases seen in those under the age of 21. Young people with pre-existing mental health conditions were being hit particularly hard, with the impacts of life in lockdown and virtual classrooms taking their toll. September 30th, 2020. Sydney West. 19 year old female Sydney West was last seen in San Francisco, California on September 30th, 2020. The college freshman had taken a pause from her classes at UC Berkeley to recover from a recent concussion. She was last seen at around 6.45 a.m. at San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge, but due to the fog and the smoke from recent wildfires, she was quickly lost on the bridge's security cameras. Apart from being a beautiful national landmark, the Golden Gate is also a bridge with a dark reputation, with recent statistics estimating that there is one attempted jumper almost every other day. Is Sydney's case another sad chapter in the history of the bridge by the bay? Or did Sydney fall victim to foul play, amnesia, or perhaps something more personal? Sydney West had grown up in Pleasanton, California, before relocating to North Carolina with her parents and younger sister sometime after 2017. She's described by her family as a sweet and goofy girl who had a strong love for the outdoors, animals, the environment, and music, playing piano and writing her own songs and lyrics. She often appeared at open mics around her new hometown in North Carolina. While in high school, Sydney developed another passion for volleyball, where she excelled on her school's team both in California and North Carolina, where she was a varsity co-captain. After graduating in 2019, Sydney decided to take a gap year and journeyed across the globe to Australia. It was during that time she began to post blogs where she described her personal struggle with depression and anxiety, and the pressure she felt in her life. In the fall of 2020, Sydney moved to the Bay Area to begin her freshman year at UC Berkeley. Unfortunately, Sydney was still struggling to recover from a concussion she had gotten earlier that summer. Details about what caused the injury remain unclear. Further complicating her plans to begin college, Pandemic protocols enacted in the spring of 2020 meant that Sydney's classes would be conducted online with no in-person classroom time. This arrangement, along with her continuing recovery, quickly led her to make the decision to defer enrollment a year and begin instead the following fall in 2021. With college temporarily on hold, Sydney did not return to North Carolina, instead choosing to stay living in the Bay Area with family friends. But she did maintain close contact with her family, having a long phone conversation with her father the night before she was last seen. He later stated he expected to speak with her the following day. Unfortunately, that would never happen. The morning of September 30th, Sydney took a ride-sharing service to the area around the Golden Gate Bridge known as Chrissy Field. She was known to be carrying her phone, headphones, and a backpack. It was not unusual for Sydney to go to the Golden Gate either for exercise or to take in the amazing scenery and to take pictures for her blog. The last thing known about Sydney's whereabouts is security camera footage from the Golden Gate, which shows her entering the bridge's pedestrian walkway. But unfortunately, intense fog and an unusually high level of haze from recent wildfires made it impossible to see her for long. Investigators were unable to locate any camera footage of her exiting the bridge, although that could be explained by the lack of consistent or clear footage that morning. The Golden Gate is monitored 24-7 by an army of cameras, which tragically have recorded many desperate actions. But that was not the case with Sydney. All footage from the Golden Gate that day was reviewed by investigators and didn't show anyone jumping. The following day, her family would make multiple attempts to reach her and became concerned by the lack of a response. Soon after, they contacted local authorities and reported Sydney is missing, mentioning her personal safety may be at risk due to depression. It wasn't long before investigators located Sydney's backpack near the Golden Gate, but it contained no indication as to where she might be. Law enforcement would eventually turn the backpack over to her family. The only items that have not been recovered were Sydney's headphones and her cell phone. Sydney's family has always believed that someone on the bridge that morning either walking, running, cycling, or driving across, 
must have seen their daughter. But if there are any eyewitness accounts out there, they have yet to be made public. Although from the beginning, there have been tips coming in to investigators on this case, none of them have panned out. Furthermore, law enforcement has had very little to say about Sydney's case, other than they do not believe it to be foul play. There has been no activity on her social media or bank accounts or phone since that morning. So what did happen to Sydney West? Although many believe Sydney's disappearance at the Golden Gate points to only one outcome, some have suggested there were other valid reasons for her to have been there. First off, Sydney was an athlete and was also slated to be on the rowing team at UC Berkeley, so it's not unbelievable that she would go out for some exercise in the early morning. Many have pointed out the fact that her headphone and cell phone were never recovered, two items she would have had for a run but it doesn't explain the backpack being left behind. Did she ditch it on purpose or was it left by accident? Some have questioned why she would have brought a backpack if her intention was to jump. Questions then immediately arose about the driver of the rideshare she had taken that morning. Although there are many horrible stories about drivers crossing the line, it was not the case here. San Francisco police were able to locate, contact, and interview the driver as part of their immediate investigation and the person was cleared as a suspect and has reportedly always been cooperative. Over the years, authorities have made changes to the Golden Gate in hopes of deterring people from using it as a dark destination. This includes safety nets and increased cameras and patrols. Although, all of the current safety nets were reportedly not in place by the fall of 2020 when Sydney was there. Another point that observers of the case have made regards eyewitnesses that morning Although the Golden Gate and San Francisco in general are a high foot and car traffic area, they weren't so much six months into lockdown, when most businesses and workplaces were still closed or partly shuttered, meaning far less people out in the street or exercising on the Golden Gate. So given the early morning hours, the decrease in traffic, and the fog and smoke, it's likely fewer people would have had the chance to see Sydney than under normal circumstances. But it still doesn't answer, what happened to Sydney West? Did the troubled young college freshman succumb to her mental health demons? Or was she simply at the bridge that morning for some exercise, but instead ran into foul play? Although there have been no credible sightings or tips that may suggest a different outcome, some observers have speculated that she could have been kidnapped or abducted in the foggy early morning hours. Others have suggested that Sydney may have orchestrated another gap year or perhaps longer than a year, and simply chose to leave her life and the pressures to excel that she'd expressed feeling from her family and her impending future in college. If Sydney didn't make it across the Golden Gate that morning, it's possible no physical evidence may ever be found. And without any indication of her plans that day, or more information about her mental state being made to the public, we may never know what happened. Sydney's family continues to have an active presence online with a website and social media accounts offering support and updates. They have also hired a private investigator to continue exploring the case. As of the making of this program, there have been no additional evidence, leads, or reported sightings made public regarding Sydney. Sydney West is 5 feet 10 inches tall, 130 pounds with light brown hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing dark leggings, a light teal hoodie, and Vans brand sneakers with a tropical print. It's possible she could have been wearing her hair in a bun or have been carrying a black backpack. There is currently a reward for any information which could lead to finding Sydney and bringing her back home. Her family stresses that no detail is too small, so if you remember anything from that foggy morning, please reach out to the San Francisco Police Department or contact private investigator Scott Dudek.